Hi guys, it's Dana here and I just wanted to do another one of my tutorials with you today. This one will be in pastel pencils, just doing this horse image of Jazz, the Tennessee Walking Horse by Karen Bromelzik, if I pronounce that right. I got this one from Photos for Artists on Facebook, but she does post on a few different sites and she has some amazing horse pictures, so definitely worth checking out. Today I'm using the Karen de Ash pastel pencils, which are amazing and new to me. And I've been using them for a couple weeks now and this morning I finally decided to sharpen them properly. Which was slightly terrifying as they are so expensive and beautiful. But I'll also be using Stabilo Carbothellos, which you can see they've had a bit of work over time. And I might toss some pit pastels in there as well if they have any colours that I really need to use. I've also started off with some pun pastel around the background. That shade is just the Burnt Sienna Extra Dark. I've only applied it lightly just to sort of tighten up that outline and make it a bit neater. So I'm basically just going to start off with some highlights and just apply those lightly so I know where I'm working. As you can see my outline isn't very clear and that's mostly because my transfer paper decided it didn't want to work so it didn't transfer the image very well at all. So I use the old fashioned method of applying pastel onto the back of my tracing paper and transferring that way but yeah it made quite a mess. I think the pastel was too soft. So next time I try that, I'll definitely be using a different one. And that particular shade of brown just hated on me all day yesterday. It made me throw another piece just straight in the bin. So I'm going to try and avoid that one for a while. So we could end up with some interesting things happening here because of this application of pastel beforehand. I haven't actually tried it this way before. I normally use your regular transfer paper which is neat and tidy and just goes underneath, but we'll see how it goes. Not too badly it seems. This particular shade Karen Darche pastels don't seem to have names on them, which is a bit sad because I like the names on my Karen Darche pastels. But this one seems to equate to the Payne's Grey, uh, the middle tone, which is I think 30%. which is actually one of my favourite colours. I've been through that pencil in the Luminance colour pencil set more than just about anything. It's super useful for highlights and shadows and pretty much everything, so it's a bit of work. I'm just going to loosely block in the highlights here so I know where I'm working because Obviously my outline's pretty rubbish. Not as tidy as I like normally. And because his legs will be black that's why there's the application of this bluish grey underneath. Um, obviously I won't just go in with straight black because I don't want them to be flat. I want them to be colourful just like every other part. I'm just trying to get the shape of those hooves right. My outline is so frustrating. I'm not sure why my carbon paper is no longer working. 
It's giving me the earrings. It's about the third time this week that's happened. Okay, onto the tail. Just add in those highlights really loosely. Just so we know where we're working. His nose. My cat is eating one of my phone brushes. Nice. So you can see at the moment this is really just about establishing the form of the horse. You want to get those shapes in there and just basically know where we're going to be working. Mossy, what was that? So I'm using this colour for where we'll have warmer highlights. And it gives me a bit more of a basis of where my colours are going to change and intersect. So I can sort of plan for that as I'm working towards these areas. You can see with the current ash pastels, they go over the top of one another so nicely that it's sort of ridiculous. It's really hard to get a glazing effect with them, I've found, which is one of my preferred methods. But when you're doing things where you just actually want your pastels to overlap and not mix colours, these are perfect. They're a bit weird too, though, because... Most manufacturers try and get their colours so that they're uh, of an average consistency, like in the hardness level. Whereas Kanda Ash, they've seemed to go on for using as little binder as possible, which makes the colours more light fast, but you suddenly get some colours that are really hard and some that are really, really soft. And I found with this set that most of your light colours are really soft. And then as you move into your dark colours, they get quite a bit harder. Which is actually not a bad thing because it stops you laying down too much dark pastel, which makes it too difficult to go over. But... It also makes it really easy for your light coloured pastels to go over the top of other ones, pretty much any other one. It's also part of the reason why I'm including a lot of the light colours first, because it just fills in the tooth a bit better, whereas the darker colours give a bit of a grittier effect. And obviously I want my finish to be pretty smooth. I'm not really aiming for photorealism in this piece, it'd be pretty much impossible at this size, even with a great photo and taking a whole heap of time. Um, I'm more aiming for just a painterly, but still realistic piece, you know, that's sort of my thing and what I do, so it's what I always tend to aim towards. Back to that Payne's grey-ish colour. I'm not going to call them by numbers because I have no idea what they are. Look 
going to try and add some fine lines in here. Because it's a really small face. This is the smallest I've worked with pastels. Especially for an animal. Putting a lighter base underneath also does is it makes it much easier to get really vibrant colours as you add the rest of them. So instead of getting all these, instead of getting them as the normal colour that the pastels are, suddenly you're getting really bright, vibrant colours that are, because every colour is affected by what's underneath it. It doesn't matter if you're using pastels or colour pencils or whatever. You can always see the colours that are underneath when you're working in dry medium. They don't really get covered up, they just get layered upon. Oh, that wasn't a bit funny. Oh well, we'll fix that later. So now I'm going to add something darker brown just to sort of begin establishing that difference. Then we can really see where we want to start adding colour and playing around. So you probably see, well it's not doing it at the moment because it's got a point on it. But this dark ground's one of the darker, grittier colours in it seems to work much better with a point. So I'll keep that in mind. This is, as I said, the first time that I've really sharpened these pencils since I got them. I've been too afraid. They're so pretty and expensive. Cover that over a little bit. I'm not going to try and smother it, just cover it over a bit. You still see the blue through it. I love the musculature of. A running horse any running moving horse it's probably one of my favorite things to do always has been When I was little we used to travel quite a lot because mum used to sort of work on the road a lot and I was always in the car and just driving all the time and I just used to sketch on everything but really rubbish sketches I never really evolved beyond drawing these really terrible horse heads and I drew them for about 10 years and they were exactly the same all the time they never really got any better and then I got cranky and decided that I actually wanted to learn to draw. And that was a couple years ago now. After I started my new job I was like, yep, I'm going to buy some pencils. And I bought a full set of polychromos. I had a couple of Prismacolor before that, but with all the breakage issues I just couldn't get used to them. So I bought a full set of polychromos and yeah I just decided that I had to learn to use them because I'd spent so much money on them. So I just sat down and every day, which I had quite a lot of time after that because I lost work for a long while. So I just started drawing, it was something to do, something I started to enjoy after not being able to draw forever. It wasn't a matter of learning from other people, it was just doing, and that's what I was trying to explain to people. You, you can learn everything you want from others, but unless you actually sat down. Yeah, so, unless you're really working on your art all the time, you're not going to improve. Like, 
you can read all the books and then watch all the tutorials that you like, but it's just doing it, you know? It's like everything, unless you have the hands-on skills, you're never going to work it out for yourself. And that's not meant to discourage anyone, it's just sort of the truth and what I've found to be the best way to learn, you know? So you can really see that the horse has some form now. And I haven't done anything special, I've just marked out where the lights and darks are. Add some shape to his face. Oh, that made him look really angry. It's okay, we'll fix that. Tiny little eyeballs. And my strokes tend to follow the curvature of his body. I'm not trying to draw in fur because his fur is at microscopic level at this point, so there's not really any reason to. You know, you're just trying to draw what you see and you can't see fur, so you don't draw fur. But you use a line to help create shape and form. It's so important. So many people get hung up on drawing fur and fur is not that difficult, I don't find. It's really free-flowing, but you need to get your colours and tones and just the shape in general right. All I'm doing at the moment is just laying in values. You can come through and refine things at any time. Okay. A little bit more highlights on a few areas where I've noticed that I've missed. Just following that curvature around to create a barrel of his body. It can always help too to just study a bit of the musculature systems of the horse or any animal really just when you're out and about even just take notice how does the shape of them change as they move how are they formed you know just adding in some more shadow under the leg which I pretty much just skipped over earlier too keen to get on with the rest of it.
It's important with horses especially to take careful note of the shape and structure of their legs because they're so bloody weird. I mean I suppose they're not weird, a lot of animals have really similar, similar structure but on horses they're just so fine I suppose and you can see all the tendons and pretty much everything. It helps to be familiar with them. I have a few horses myself and we do their feet and a little bit of body work and things. So you get pretty familiar with their structure, which is nice. For me anyway, considering what I do. The really interesting thing about brown and any bluish tones is that they're both, when you combine both, they become really neutral. So you end up with more of a grey than anything else and you can use this technique in pastels or colour pencils or paints or anything and actually create colours that will simulate black. I don't really use too much black unless I'm trying to get an area really dark. I'll mostly use a combination of blues and browns just to get it to work nicely, you know. And black is pretty stark and it's actually more of a blue tone than anything else so using brown also helps to keep your work nice and warm. Then I'm going to use a bit of black here because I like it with the pastels because it's so soft I suppose because I do want it to be a bit cooler but I am going to combine it as much as I can with the brown which means using a really light hand and just sort of blending frantically and hoping it works the best thing about pastels when you use black is you can go with another colour and just fix it it's not life or death like when you use colour pencils I will go back over this parts of the leg with um, more of the highlights to just sort of shape it up a bit more but at the moment I'm just loosely blocking in what I see still. You just sort of gradually work your way to getting to the fine details you know you don't do it all at once you sort of block in the really obvious ones and block in the ones that are a bit smaller then go smaller again and just work your way into it. There's no stress, no rush. I find that if you concentrate on too many details all at once you get overwhelmed and you start losing sight of what's the important things which are, you know, shape and form and creating an interesting composition as well. Even colour is not that important. Which a good example of that is probably ballpoint pen artists. Some of them just do drawings in a purple big pen. And even though they've drawn a bright pink elephant or a purple horse, it's still realistic because they've got their values and tones right. And it's not even about the details so much. A good example of details not mattering is uh, miniature drawing artists. They draw the important parts. They can't put in every little hair, but it still looks realistic because they've got the shape and the form right. It's so important.
and the values of your work. Not the colours, but the values. And values is about putting your highlights in the right places, getting your shading, the right gradients, and getting your darks dark enough. Something I see a lot of people don't achieve is just getting their work dark enough. You know? You've got to be... You can't be afraid to make dark marks because that's... Well, now I sound like a sadist out of Harry Potter, but you know? Um, you can't be afraid to make dark areas on your work really dark. Good contrast makes for a really good composition. You don't have to go to it all at once, you just work up to it. I'm not pressing hard, I'm not going fast, I'm just sort of sketching over the top until I get a value that I'm happy with. You know, if you're not certain, go over it lightly once and then come back and look at it again. Does it match the rest of your work? Is it dark enough? Is it too dark. You know, when going dark it's really important to do it in stages so that you don't go too dark. I mean in pastels it doesn't matter so much but you can get yourself stuck if you go too dark to use too much pressure, put too much pastel on the paper. You can definitely get stuck that way. I found this horse's composition a little odd to start with when I found the image because he's really got his head jammed up against his body and it makes him look a little bit more short and fat I guess at the front end and then normal at the other end. But he's sort of growing on me. So you can see I've got a pretty good map of lights and darks and everything in between. And you can really see the form of the horse starting to appear and he's not even got any colour added to him. This is pretty much just a grayscale drawing but using a bit of bluish grey and an ivory creamy colour and brown. So, but it is basically like creating a grey scale for underneath your work. And it gives you a chance to judge and evaluate what your colour values are going to be before you start applying colour. Because once colour starts going in there, everything just got sort of a little muddled and a lot of people start to panic after a while. So if you do the groundwork beforehand, you're already off to a good start. A little star in there before I forget, because I've gone over the top about four times and completely forgot about it. I'm going to just mush his eye, that looks fantastic. Okay. 
calendar ash pencils are not really designed to be work this small. But I'm giving it my best shot because I like them so much. I am going to have to tidy up this side with the cover that lace. What are you doing? What is that? Idiot. It's making me uncomfortable. Let's fix that with some more hair. Mm. So tempted to bring it down and cover his eye. Then it'll be naughty. Nah, that's better. That was just a stupid colour, but there we go. Much better. I have no idea why I used that colour. Let's see if I can't fix that because it's really a weird greeny colour. I don't want my horse to be green. There we go. Might as well get rid of this colour now. You'll be able to see how the different colours that I've already laid in there will affect what I'm using now, which is some weird, really vibrant orange. I only have the 40 set of Kanda Ash pastels, which makes me sad because I feel like maybe this some really awesome colours in the other set that I'm missing out on even though these are all fantastic colours deep down inside I know I'm just trying to talk myself into buying the biggest set which I don't need because I don't want to spend any more money that's bad I'm also very naughty because I don't really test my colours out before I apply them and I usually end up surprising myself and using really gross colours that I really regret. And then you have to use them a bit more for the sake of continuity and balance and all that crap which makes it really difficult. Hey, sort of working. What the hell is going on on the other side? I have no idea. <laughs> A bit more hair fixes everything. There we go. In here. could potentially become some really random colours this was. I feel mean. I suppose that's the best thing about not being working on a commission. Is I can turn in whatever colour I want. Like a pink or rainbow unicorn or whatever. Hooray! We're getting somewhere. Is that dark shadow doing there? Yeah, that's a bit better.
one annoying thing about the Caran d'Ache pencils, and it's not a bad thing, it's just sort of how they are, is how freaking vibrant they are when they go over the top of another colour. Like, you have no hope at glazing nicely over the top, especially not on a piece like this size. But it's just like, hey, I'm orange, nice to meet you. I'm going to cover up everything else you put there. That was the wrong colour. It's okay. Oh, that's the right one. But that's sort of where the Carbothellos pick up the slack because they are really nice for using more of a glazing technique. Which is basically laying down one colour and then gently going over with another colour until it changes tone, colour, whatever. Yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, I really need a different chair. I'm saying that I have like three or four chairs in my studio. I'm just using the most uncomfortable one for some reason. This, what I'm doing right now, is sort of glazing. Just going over the top really lightly. It's like, hey, cover. It's very nice and it actually mixes with the other ones. This looks a bit weird, but I really don't really care at the moment. Like, just do what you told. I'm hoping once I go, have done the rest, I can go back and deepen it up a bit. But yeah, let's see how it goes. Yeah, you can see why I did that underpainting of browns and cream and all that. Because you can go over the top and get like a realistic-ish looking sort of horse colour, maybe. Hopefully, that's what it looks like. Normally I use a lot more, a lot of different colours through the coat, but at the moment the closing is just working nicely. I'll add some more colours once I've finished going over the top with this. This will probably 
end up being the most boring video you've ever watched, but yeah, you get that. Nobody made you watch it. I probably tried my best, but it doesn't really work. You guys just sort of do whatever you want to do. Wow, the hell was that? I think I say that a lot. My pick pastel pencil was actually nicely sharpened for me. I feel weird because his eyes are like really black now. That's creepy. Nope, still weird. But I can't think it's any better. Okay, let's move the highlight over there. Just a bit. Oh god. Nope. Shouldn't have touched it. Shouldn't have touched it. I think I do that a lot. I'm always trying to fix things and I just make them way worse. I'm not sure if that achieved anything. Here, here I can do tiny eyeballs, not so much. And yes, black hair is all about the highlights. Bit of blue, because why not? Oh, that's better. I just like completely reconstructed his face, but that's better. It's gonna be much worse, but oh, there we go. It would help if I actually looked at my reference. Just a little bit. Actually, much better. I know I said something at the beginning about not trying to make this too realistic, but when do I ever listen to myself? Yes, I obsess over all the tiny details. Does it help me? No, not really. This makes me grumpy. <laughs> Getting somewhere. Color. I'm gonna try and glaze a little bit with this Caran d'Ache pencil. It's probably not gonna end well for me, but we'll try. Hello. 
color everywhere. I'm not really much of a talker while I'm working. I start off going really strong and then I really start concentrating because otherwise I start fucking things up. Like when I apply colour. I'm really bad at applying colour, even though that's literally what I do. I stuff it up all the time. Most of my work is just me trying to fix where I've stuffed it up. Which I'm quietly convinced that's like 90% of what doing art is about. Stuffing up and then fixing it. Realising how you fixed it and then making the exact same mistake over again so you can get the same look. It's a never ending process, I swear. Mm -hmm. Actually, it didn't go too badly. Now that I've said that, watch me stuff. Not today, boys and girls. Oh, need red. This creepy red colour. Or maybe that creepy red colour. Which one works nice? Look at that, I'm learning from my mistakes, I actually tested the colour out. Okay. I want the more purpley red one. So I've currently got a handful of about 50 pencils. Not that many. About eight or nine. Ow. Where's my axe? Oh god. Okay. Purpley red. Here we go. I think this one is actually the only Caran d'Ache pencil I have that has a name on it. Dark Carmine. The rest of them are all have no name, which is sad. But it makes me instantly fond of this one, which is really soft and really pretty. Look at it. It's like a rose colour in a pencil. Who knew? This horse is probably going to be some whacked up colour when I finished. It's not even remotely natural. But I don't really care. I mostly just print the colours I'm going to use on their prettiness value. Like this colour. It's probably not even remotely close to what's in the reference picture, but it is pretty. So why not? Who's running this ship? And I completely just missed where I was supposed to be drawing. But don't look at that. We'll fix it later. One thing I like to go is do is go over the desaturated areas with some really nice vibrant stuff. Because blues and browns does make it quite desaturated. Oh, my reference is disappearing. There it is. I'm not very good with technology. He usually stuffs up about halfway through a portrait. 
and then I'm stuck because I no longer have a printer anymore it used to work so well now it doesn't work at all so I can no longer print off any reference photos so I have to work off a tablet and then that likes to die occasionally just occasionally when I'm in the middle of a project which I'm getting paid for unlike this one where it'll keep working fine Ooh, all red in the face because we can't possibly stuff up his face anymore we'll just make it pretty colours instead yay I feel like his legs need some red. They probably really don't, but they're getting some anyway. Okay. Hmm. Now, I need to add it back in some more darkish, greyish, bluish colours to try and get that neato shine that seems to be applicable. I need a horses just to make my life difficult. I probably should have done this before I applied the red because then I'd get all nice purpley tones but I don't think that far ahead. Because this colour is really soft and it likes going over the top of everything. Mm, like that. Now his legs are entirely blue. Yay! That was not what I intended at all. Okay, let's fix that because that didn't go well at all. Mm -hmm. Yay, darkness, be my friend. I hope you were paying attention just then and you noticed what difference adding black back in made. Because contrast, people, contrast. The hell? Oh, there we go. Okay. Just trying to sort of make sure I've got shadows wherever they need to be. Won't go any further. And cover them all up again by accident. Whoops. I have no idea what happened there. Where'd half his leg go? Oh, those lines are not supposed to join up.
I fixed it, sort of, maybe. Now everything's red. Bright lights. I have to tone that back up with some random crap again. Random crap. Some orange ish colour. That's what I mean. I swear I know what I'm talking about. Hooray! We're getting somewhere. And I'm not even trying to draw his dapples in. We're not going there today. I'm not. You can draw whatever dapples you like. I'm not. I just foresee dapples at this size going very badly. Whoa, we're making progress. Okay. Nope. In hindsight, we will not use that color. Trying to make him not too obnoxiously coloured. He probably looks really brown in the camera, or grey, or something stupid because technology hates me. And why would it take a photo or a video if it's the actual colour of what I'm drawing? It wouldn't. Blend, 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 blend. I've been very good and I haven't used my finger to blend. Like, this entire time. I normally do, and it normally makes a very big mess. No, 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 don't slide down. I've got things falling off the top of my desk at me. Okay. This is actually working. Mm-hmm. 
as well. Is that colour? There's a bit of cold light around here because it's weirdly red. Probably doesn't help that I did cover the whole thing in red, in a reddish orange, but uh, you get that. I'm just making my strokes a little bit more obvious at this point because not that obvious would be good. But I do want some texture in there. I don't want it to look like a little stamp or something. I really love these Caran d'Ache pencils. They're so nice. It's just like so smooth. So lovely. You should probably not buy any though because you'll probably get addicted like I did. And then you'll probably be in debt for the rest of your life. <laughs> like me. <laughs> Hence why someone should probably buy this drawing when I'm done. So that I can buy more pencils. And yes, I know I said I wasn't using my finger for blending. I didn't want that spot to become too obvious. And I'm not sure where my little blending stump has gone. It's around somewhere, I'm sure. Just not here. Why does that leg look so stupid? Nope, that's the wrong colour. That colour. A little more black. The Caran d'Ache black pencil is just so soft and pretty. Like, ridiculously so. Okay, tail. Probably my favourite colours out of the Stipula Carbothellos is the greys. I have this thing about greys. Just I use them for everything. the difference in how the Caran d'Ache pastel pencil goes over the top compared to the Carbothello. The Carbothello struggles a bit over the rest of that really dark pastel whereas the Caran d'Ache is just like hey bitch I've got this and just completely covers it up like way too much in most circumstances but I'm sure I'll get used to it Add the red and the tail. See, it just goes over the top. It's like, it doesn't struggle at all. It's a bit annoying, actually. I nearly, very nearly forgot part of the mine. I'm sure I would have realised eventually. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Need a ground. Unless he needs to be trotting on something. You saw my recent commission of a barrel racing horse. 
You probably realise why I'm not really into drawing dirt at the moment. I'm just sort of very much over it. <laughs> it's way too much dirt just flying around in that piece. It's really weird because in the reference photo the horse doesn't actually have a shadow. I have no idea why. But yeah. Okay. And I never have any idea what I should do for backgrounds until I actually get to them. And then I usually stuff it up. Nine times out of ten. Now I'm hoping this will not be one of those days. Is that? It's actually going well. Sort of. Maybe. I really like using these blending oh, beauty blender things. Oh, look how manky it is. Ha! <laughs> Because rather than using a stump or your finger, you don't have to use really any pressure or anything. Wow, that really made so much difference. Look at different colour. Let's try that again. God, I hate doing backgrounds. Yep, that'll do. Looks good to me. <laughs> 